Former Bubba Gumps. Oh my God. I know. I'm very excited to talk about this one. All I'm right. Excited. Here we go. Let's okay. Go. Yeah. All right. Welcome, welcome everyone to Holy City Happy Hour with Charleston Culinary Tours. My name is Charlie. My name is Palmer. And what are we talking about tonight, Palmer? We have a lot. Um, yes, we have a lot. Um, we haven't been with each other for two weeks, I think. Maybe three. Yeah. Um, do we want to jump right in? Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, Condé Nast, uh, the magazine that if you live here, you know all about, has named us, you know, best city, best small city, many times in a row. Uh, Condé Nast has put out a 31 best restaurants in Charleston list. Here's our list. Um, CNTraveler.com. If you want to check this out on your own, if you live here, I'm sure these are all things that you know and love. And it's a nice mix of like casual and fancy. Um, but if you want to check and see if your favorite place made the list, see what's on the 31, nice big long list because it got a lot to choose from. Head on over to Sea and Traveler um, and give it give it a look. Nice, good find. Do you mostly agree? Yeah, I think so. Um, I haven't like dug and I don't really know that there's anything on there that I'm like, no, that place is bad because we really have very few places that are bad. So yeah, I think they did a good job. I think they did good, good picks overall. Very nice. We have a, a reopening. So it's not a new opening. It's a reopening of a restaurant that uh, with the pandemic. Um, so they shut down way back in March of 2020 and have the means to stay closed um, up until very recently. Uh, and that is establishment. They are on Broad Street. Uh, they are in between church and state, and they are uh, that's where they get their name from. The establishment clause. Establishment church and state, and they are in between church and state street. Very clever. Absolutely fantastic restaurant. Uh, we are a big fan of them. They uh, were our partners um, prior to uh, the shutdown uh, in the before times, and hopefully they will join us again on tour. So who knows? If you join us on tour, you might get to the establishment. If not, check it out. Uh, silly same executive chef Matt. Canter, um, and they very much have encouraged now that it is public knowledge that they are open. Uh, go ahead and make your reservations now because they are going to be the new hot ticket in town for a little while. Absolutely, absolutely. Be on the lookout. Uh, we have a new uh, local inductee to the Barbecue Hall of Fame, Rodney Scott. Congratulations, well deserved. It's going to be inducted, and in, let's see the ceremony. Uh, 40, we, 41st World Series of Barbecue in Kansas City in September, which I bet's fun if you guys wanted to go. Uh, you guys know Rodney Scott for his restaurant here, his restaurant in Hemingway. Um, and apparently I saw in this, he apparently has a, a second location in Birmingham, Alabama. So very exciting for him. Uh, very proud and again, well-deserved. Uh, there is an article about this on Post and Courier if you want to give it a look or uh, MSN. Here is where I have it. Congratulations, Rodney Scott. Well deserved indeed. Congrats. Um, and then finally, um, what happened here in South Carolina? Our state of emergency has officially come to an end. Um, a little over a year um, of that giving emergency powers to the governor. And then with the long along with that, the local state of emergency has also ended. But what that means, why we're talking about it, is that the provisions made in that state of emergency is that we can no longer have curbside beer and wine sales. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, so the House, well, the legislature in general, were working real hard to figure out how to get this into law and just they were nitpicking on like what is and isn't and all that good stuff as legislation goes and they just didn't get to it in time during the session. Um, so... Uh, temporarily that is suspended if you come to rely on that um, it is now illegal again um, but the house is attempting to uh, create a temporary renewal through their annual budget plan so mm, hopefully you can. <laughs> people yeah. definitely are interested in keeping that around so um, mm. you know, write to your legislature and say yeah legislate this please because we, we want to pick it up we want to pick it up curbside you get a curd, so I make it law. Hopefully that, uh, that gets changed and made legal yet again. So we are I moving on to ongoing. 
Ongoing, uh, this summer, uh, Low Country Food Bank is offering free meals through the summertime for kids and teens. Um, this is their Instagram, LC Food Bank. If you want to go check more about this, uh, No Kid Hungry. Uh, so if you're interested in getting more information about that, if you need free food for a kid or teen that you know, um, if you're a kid or teen, I don't know if you're a kid or teen while you're watching this, but you know, you might be. Um, and you're in need of some food this summer. Uh, yeah, Low Country Food Bank, uh, that's our big food bank. Um, and yeah, so they, they're doing a, a free meals for kids. Uh, summertime tends to be a time when uh, food insecurity uh, it's big for kids because a lot of people um, come with, uh, <laughs> uh, with school lunches, uh, lacking school lunches, school breakfast, um, sometimes it's the only meals that they get. Um, and so when school is out, they are lacking those um, access to food. Um, so Low Country Food Bank is specifically targeting uh, school age kids um, for for that reason in the summertime. They sure are. Am I back? You're back. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, all right. So this, my next little thing ties into something that, you know, has been kind of a recurring theme for us. And that has been short staffed staffing, lack of staff in the uh, food and bev world here in Charleston. So this is from Butcher and Bee about a week ago. Uh, Hi friends, for the foreseeable future, the Bee will be closed for lunch on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, still open for dinner those days, open for dinner seven days a week. They got to put their team first. So as many places are, they're taking a few days or a few, um, you know, serving time days off a week to give their staff a bit of a break. Good for them, good for their staff. It's the right thing to do. Um, but yeah, staffing shortage continues to have an impact, which who knows when that'll stop. God knows, maybe never. Maybe never, unless there's some changes that are coming. <laughs> we yeah. shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Folks saw the light with <laughs> the other side of the food and beverage industry. Yep, 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 yep. But yeah, for the time being, I don't know if we'll, I don't know if we'll see much of a change. Um, our next little thing here is an initiative that um, South Carolina Brewers has taken up. South Carolina Brewery Initiative with DHEC. This is called Shot with a Chaser, uh, expanding vaccine access in South Carolina. A lot of breweries, maybe all of our breweries are doing this. I don't know. Certainly a lot of them, if you look at their Instagrams, are uh, beginning to this is five days ago. Guild members will open up their breweries to allow for DHEC's free vaccine clinics for those who still haven't had their COVID shot. Uh, part of the shop with the Chaser Partnership, if you come and get your vaccine, your first beer is on us at whatever brewery you're at um, that day. If you're 21, don't, if you're a child, don't, don't go do this. Um, <laughs> Uh, and they have free soda if you're not 21. If you're 20 or you're 18, you can get a free soda. Or if you just don't drink beer, beer's not your thing, you can get a soda. Um, so this is nice. I like this is a great little initiative just to get folks that maybe haven't had a chance to get their vaccine yet. Get a vaccine, get a beer. Kind of reminds me of the thing that Anheuser-Busch is doing where they're giving people a beer to get a shot. But local, drink local beers when you get your shot. Um, so check out your local breweries, Instagram, your favorite local brewery. Because again, I think lots and lots of people around the area are doing this. So you should be able to go into most anywhere you like around here and get your shot with a chaser. Fantastic. Um, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Um, and then one more from me, and then we'll let Charlie talk. Uh, and this is a little sort of specialty drink thing that Handcraft and Mount Pleasant is doing for the summertime. They're doing a tiki takeover for the summer. Tropical themed escape is coming to Handcraft. Um, and if you flip through their Instagram, this is, I just like this picture because it's like all their little tiki things. Um, if you flip through their Instagram, you'll see they've got a bunch of different ones that they've been focusing on. This one looks particularly good to me. But they'll have fun tiki drinks on their menu all summer long, from Mai Tais to Singapore slings. Um, and tiki bites, shrimp ceviche, huli huli, ceviche, 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 huli huli drink kebabs, Hawaiian pork sliders, bacon wrap plantains. So if you want to get in kind of a tropical mood this summer, head over to Handcraft um, and get you, get you a fun tiki drink, a special little thing they're doing for the summer. Uh, some more shifts and adjustments um, uh, as we... Uh, transition um, from, you know, 
through through and beyond the pandemic. Um, we, the single use plastics. Uh, so Charleston County had enacted um, a single use plastics ban in early 2020. And then once the pandemic hit, restaurants were shut down except for takeout service. Um, they were like, yep, no, we can't enforce this right now, like do what you need to do to survive restaurants. Um, and so that in, uh, ban was lifted in March uh, March 20th of 2020, and it returned June 8th. And so they've put out the notice of like, hey, listen, I know it's been confusing because as soon as it was enacted, it was then lifted, and then now it's back again. But it is back again. We are going to start enforcing it. So take note, single-use plastic ban is back in effect. Good to know. That's hard to keep track. It is. Hard to keep track, so watch, watch them, watch them plastics, y'all. It's back, plastic attack. Uh, we have some future happenings, things that are going to be happening in the future. Uh, we have a new restaurant coming up. It's called the Pass. Uh, this was previously Poke. It was something Poke. I feel very bad that I immediately this place closed and I immediately forgot what it was called. It was Poke Place. Uh, at the corner of St. Philip and I believe Cannon. Um, and it, this is also the place that used to be, I'm gonna forget the name as well. It was like a hot dog, like a fancy hot dog and milkshake ice cream place that lasted for like a blink of an eye. Very near warehouse, if that's helpful for anybody. But it's not open yet. It looks cool. Uh, it's gonna be called The Pass, Charleston. By day, fresh eats, natural wines, and chef driven shit uh by night one table eight courses the chef's table at the past so this is an interesting concept i don't know that i we've seen anywhere do like you know like come in and get i think on their window that also they said something about like really great sandwiches perhaps which is interesting uh but i don't know that we've seen a place be like yeah we're just doing sandwiches interesting food stuff and wine in the day and then uh, the place whole place becomes kind of a chef's table at night one table eight courses that's really different and innovative um this is one of those spots where it seems like just nothing has been able to stick i think we all know of spots like that around the country around the world just kind of so i'm excited to see if this is sort of innovative and cool and um different enough that maybe this is this is what stays so fingers crossed good luck the past we'll be wishing you well yeah, indeed. Yeah, it sounds like they're kind of taking a uh, rip off of the our kitchen, but adding in kind of like neighborhood corner store ish. Yeah, so yeah. So you Perhaps. have wine. Um, yeah, and like maybe a little more upscale than anything that's been there to my knowledge before. I don't know. Um, it does sound interesting. So if you're in the area, if you're walking around that um, Canterbury Elliebury neighborhood. Give them a look, see how it's looking inside. Seems like it should be opening pretty soon. Nice, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Um, other new stuff, Uptown Social. Seems like we always also talk about Uptown Social. Um, you guys might know they have been, have been doing kind of a breakfast thing um, called Bodega in on I think weekend mornings, their breakfast sandwiches. So they've decided to kind of expand on that and they were already gonna open like a bodega thing down the street, I think on Anne, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about that that concept before and, and we'll keep talking about it. Um, but this is, I believe, a different thing. So newest concept created and curated by Chef Alec. So it's going to be called the Greasy Spoon. Sounds like it's going to be kind of diner style. Uh, so I think I'm going to be moving bodega to its own spot, as we talked about. And I think the Greasy Spoon is going to be the thing that kind of comes into the Uptown Social space in place of bodega once they get bodega moved out i think um so keep an eye on this it looks good this graphic is adorable i think they did a great job with this and i love the idea of like a new york diner meets low country uh so something coming back it's been gone since uh the before times uh second sunday on king um it is exactly what it sounds like. It every, The second Sunday of every month, um, they shut down part of King Street, all vehicular traffic, and that does include bicycles and uh, skateboards and all that. So it's purely pedestrian traffic from Calhoun to Queen Street. Um, uh, it runs from noon to five o'clock each day. It is a lot of fun. Um, it's one of the few times you can walk around with a drink in hand out in public uh, in, uh, in Charleston. There's live music, there's vendors, restaurants will put um, 
uh, tables out on the sidewalks if they weren't already doing that because of the pandemic. Um, but that's coming back on September 12th. That'll be the first second Sunday on King uh, since March 2020, I believe. I think people have been want, wanting this back. And, you know, I think with stuff like we've been to like the Low Country Food Truck Festival, the people are kind of desperate to get outside and mingle and get out around the town as it were. So great, great that this is coming back. I'm excited. I used to drive me crazy back when I was a tour guide, but now that I'm not, <laughs> you can do uh, yeah, I can, I can like it like everybody else. Cool. Welcome back second Sunday. We were excited to have you back. Um, a little pop-up spot that emerged during COVID um, is doing a series of pop-ups over the summer tacos de la Bahia. Um, this is one guy making ta amazing tacos and he's doing a couple different pop-ups over the summer. Uh, so the, he lives on Cooper Street and I think he's going to be serving this out of his place on Cooper. Um, I'm taking that from this hashtag cooks on Cooper. So if you're interested in this, uh, be following this account and see what else he says about it, but this will be coming up on Sunday, but he's got a lot of pop-ups coming up. Definitely has been wanting to be all around town. And I think he finally kind of got his foot in the door and his stuff is so good. I still think about his tacos that I got months ago. So please um, follow Tacos de la Bahia, see where he's going to be, try some of his stuff. He's a fantastic cook. He came here from California and is uh, just trying to hustle and, and make amazing West Coast food for us. So give it a look. Woohoo! I'm excited. I haven't tried them yet. Really, really good. Um, so this is Dell's and you guys know Dell's is a family run biz um, and they are going to be celebrating Juneteenth, wonderful holiday with Sacred Sunrise with Mama Dell and her daughter, Smarl. Um, Sacred Sunrise is going to be a sunrise, 6 a.m. to noon, um, sort of mix of a couple different things, sort of healing rituals, spoken word, medicinal tonics, meditation, movement, food for life, open to all pay what you can. Um, and they're going to have great food. They actually, I think, have put in their Instagram and a later post sort of what uh, food they're going to have. But this is just going to be an opportunity to come welcome um, welcome Juneteenth with the sun um, with some sort of healing practices and wonderful, wonderful food. So they're going to have a couple different platters, a Lucky Bowl. Um, as you guys know, they're veg and vegan friendly. So they have some vegan soulful platters. Um, soulful platters as well that are not necessarily vegan, but they've got a lot of great veg forward and veg friendly stuff that they're going to be serving from noon to three. So they have this morning, lovely morning, um, so sunrise welcome for Juneteenth, and then they'll be serving um, these bowls and platters until three o'clock. So if you didn't want to get up real early um, and do the sunrise stuff, um, you could still get some of their Juneteenth specialties um, and their food's amazing. You guys know that. I'm excited to try. I hope I can get a, my hands on their vegan mac and cheese. Some of those platters, it sounds so good. So happy early Juneteenth to you guys, to Dell's. Um, and give this a look, either the menu or the the sunrise, sacred sunrise, if you're interested, because it looks beautiful. It's, like it's going to be a lot of fun um, and a great way to welcome the day. Good, fine. I was just saying, like, I'd seen a couple of Juneteenth things, but, like, nothing was food related. And I was just like, where's the great food? I know there's a... Um, uh, a digital thing that's happening to some some low country uh black female chefs are doing like a new mm -hmm. but yeah in terms of like things to go do and eat i was fine a lot so good find <laughs> yeah sacred sunday give it a look um and then finally i wanted to end with this just because last time uh last episode as it were um mm -hmm. Mourned the loss, uh, mourned the official closing of workshop, uh, our food hall um, in, in Charleston that, um, you know, Palmer and I absolutely love, all of Charleston loved. It just was a business model that just wasn't working out the way it needed to. Um, but yeah. as we mentioned, <laughs> um, uh, something surely had to come and take its place, that capacity um, of having multiple stalls in one area, a food hall. We have to have a food hall in Charleston in some way. We're just, it's, we're too much of a foodie city not to have one. So there is word that there is one coming in a much more centralized location. So in the former Bubba Gumps, so there used to be a Bubba Gumps on South Market Street, pretty popular place, and they closed down. <laughs> um, I guess everybody kind of finally realized, like, maybe we shouldn't go to a chain seafood restaurant 
while we're in a city known for seafood. Um, so they closed down. Um, and I heard about this first last night and then saw the article this morning. But so somebody, um, another tour guide was just like, it's turning into a food hall again. So apparently before it was Bubba Gums, it was a food hall already. Um, really? That is coming back. So where Bubba Gums used to be, South Market, it's going to be called, gonna, going to be called Port of Call Food and Brew Hall. Uh, it's going to have four food vendors in there and potentially have food carts as well. Wow. Uh, they're aiming for a September 1st opening, but as we know with restaurants, um, we can probably expect closer to October, maybe even November, just depending on how things go and how many floods happen between now and then, because that is a flood prone area. Mm -hmm. uh, and if y'all were here this weekend, y'all know what we're talking about. Feel that um, <laughs> they're going to have three bars on the premises in addition to the four food vendors. So there's going to be an upstairs bar, a downstairs bar. And then if you're familiar with that restaurant, there's this like this big courtyard like outdoor covered dining area um and that's gonna have a bar as well so an upstairs upstairs downstairs and courtyard bar they're gonna have in the front kind of towards, towards the street they're gonna have a retail space uh selling local craft beer to go um and the um uh owner uh the the person in behind all of this uh said expect extremely different food vendors that is their plan i think didn't make any didn't seem like they had an idea of who was going to be going into those spaces, um, but they are all going to have their own kitchen like workshop. Do they have their own spaces? Um, but it's not going to be a rotation like workshop was. It's not an incubator kind of place. It's purely just, nope, they're there. They're supposed to be there. They're there until they go out of business. Um, and so, yeah, so very different places, but all melding together. So really exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited to have a place like this. Um, and it's going to be right in the center of town. Um, it's kind of one of the best locations for a restaurant to be. Um, and yeah, I'm looking for it. So Port of Call Food and Brew Hall coming September 1st. September 1st. We'll see. Probably, probably not. Uh, it does. Thank you for joining us tonight uh, for another episode of Holy City Happy Hour, where we talk about Charleston food news, all the things you need to know uh, for this week and next. Um, <laughs> We are Charleston Culinary Tours. We are a food tour company. Uh, so all of our tours are food and drink related. We also have sit down experiences like our Dessert with Death and Historic Supper Club. If you like history, if you like food, if you like drinking, we are the place to check out. Surely there is a tour that uh, is made for you uh, that we offer, or we have a lot of custom experiences as well. So check us out, charlestonculinarytours.com. Also feel free to give us a call. I will most likely be the one answering uh, or shoot us an email info at charlestonculinarytours.com. We'll be happy to... Uh, find the fit for you again if you like food we probably got something that you'll enjoy um we also have a lot of social media you want to talk about that palmer we do have a lot of social media um, at charleston culinary tours on instagram and facebook uh follow us i run the social media follow us on the social media i post good food things we're on facebook every tuesday five o'clock uh ish and, um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you next Friday, Tuesday. Bye. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us for yet another Holy City Happy Hour. We hope you enjoyed it thoroughly as usual. If you did, we hope you will like. We hope you will subscribe. Maybe that's over here. Who knows? And we hope that you will uh, hit the alarm bell so that you're notified when we ever we upload. Please talk in the comments. Let us know what you think about the stuff we're covering, if there's anything else you want us to cover, any new segments. Uh, but we hope to see you back here next week. Have a great week. Bye.